When cancer took the life of his best friend, Ricardo Braglia redirected the focus of his international health company to improving treatment for patients with cancer. Then, cancer took his mom. Inspired by his mother and the many loved ones he's lost to cancer, he is now a major contributor to cancer research. In this episode of Your Stories, Ricardo talks to his friend, and ASCO and Conquer Cancer CEO, Dr. Clifford Huddis, about coping with loss, embracing life's special moments, and what he sees as the future of cancer care. So, Ricardo, we all come to where we are in life from very diverse paths and backgrounds, and we're curious about your childhood, especially given that you grew up in Europe. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like when you grew up and how that relates to where we are today? Yeah, I grew up in in Italy, uh, in a small village uh, in the countryside of uh, Milan. And uh, my family has been uh, uh, always involved in the pharmaceutical area because my grandfather started uh, these uh, activities after the war. And so that was part of my DNA. I remember since I was 14, during the summertime, uh, my father said, you cannot do more than two weeks of holidays. The rest should be working in the company. So I started doing, you know, warehousing and uh, moving stuff. And then when I was 16, uh, helping to produce tablets. And then when I was uh, 18, uh, going to the labs to understand some chemical things. And then uh, I went to the university and then my family decided to sell the, th- the Italian company. We got to Switzerland and and there was a startup again. And my father and a couple of other friends uh, started a company from scratch in, in, in the 70s. And then I was involved in that. Then uh, how I get into the oncology, that is, is what is today my company, but also my focus of life, was mainly due to two major events. One was um, the death of my best friend. He died by multiple myeloma. I was shocked not just by the death, but by the side effects uh, of, the, of the chemotherapy and by all these stuff that is linked to, to, to the illness itself and to the therapy. So I refocused my company from anti-inflammatory and gastrointestinal and antibiotic area to oncology. And the second one has been uh, that my family, unfortunately, as a family that uh, die of, uh, of cancer, my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother, my two uncle, my, my my aunt, and unfortunately now my last aunt also has a, a very bad pancreatic can- cancer. So my family has definitely been affected by the, this terrible disease. Now, I know your mother's death was a particularly difficult one for you. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about your relationship with your mother, how close you felt to her. I'm the, the, the older boy of a family of two sons. And of course, you know, mom is mom. And my father, being an entrepreneur, was always out of the house, especially when I was young. So all my values and education was really linked to my mom. I then went to, to school, then to university, then starting business, and then created my family. I married two sons too. And, and of course, the relationship with my mom was a little bit more away. I see her on weekends or on holidays, not on a daily life like you're a kid, which is normal for any families. Then uh, what happened, uh, unfortunately, four years ago, she got ovarian cancer and then immediately diagnostic with uh, multiple metastases uh, almost everywhere in her body and uh, was immediately going into palliative care and she died uh, four months after. But in these four months, I dedicated to my mom every single day uh, in the morning, in the evening, at lunchtime. And we recreated this feeling that we had when I was a child. And and this relationship really evolved back again. And uh, we have uh, some very good moment uh, in the morning when I uh, waking her up and, and trying to get out of the bed and, uh, and also spending time in praying together and creating a, a faith again. So uh, in, in the bad news that she passed away, the good news is that she inspired me to, to, get to do what I'm doing every day and fighting against cancer. Every family that experiences cancer 
probably experiences it in some uniquely different way, different ages, different family members, different kinds of cancer, different journeys. And you've described a bit of that journey. I wonder if there's any aspect of this that you would talk about in terms of the broader impact on your family, not just on you, but on your siblings and the other generations around your mother. The first reaction was, we don't have the illness. My mother will survive. Uh, even though it was very clear that there was no chance, that was the first reaction. And then the, 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 the situation was that the family get back together and uh, we, we trying to create a kind of uh, team to support my, my mother and, and my father. So it was a kind of a group to gain together. And even my, my two sons at, at the time were at university. They spent a lot of time uh, coming back and supporting my mom and staying with her and uh, talking with her. So it's creating a kind of defense unit around this kind of thing, which I think was, was a good uh, approach. And everybody was involved in a little bit on supporting and, and creating a, a team around that. So it sounds to me from what you described that in some cases, a strong family can be both made stronger and have a positive response. But I imagine for many families, this is a much bigger stress if they don't have a foundation of strength and connectedness. If you have not a good family background or family strength, that could be a challenge. And especially if you have a family which lives very far away, this could be a very big stress. You need people that give you love and support you through this uh, journey. What I consider very important is uh, to have uh, faith, which doesn't mean to have faith in one specific religion, but as to have more faith on a spiritual point of view, which help you to, to, to face everyday steps. If you don't have a strong family or a, or a family close by, is to identify maybe a couple of good friends that uh, could support you through this journey. I'm curious as a donor, how do you measure that return on investment? Of course, uh, research uh, uh, is a difficult field to have uh, immediately a return on investment. But uh, if you select a promising high-quality researcher because has great ideas, this is uh, you, you really uh, wide the possibility of return and having good results. So identifying the, the best people and, and monitor their career and following their career um, is probably the best way to have uh, results. As a supporter philanthropically of research, surely you must have a vision about where you think our field should be headed. What do you think cancer care should look like five years, 10 years, 20 years from now? I think that we have to put uh, the patients uh, in the focus. We have to invest in making, uh, hopefully, uh, one day the cancer free for all, every cancer. But in the meanwhile, trying to extend the life of these patients in, in order that uh, cancer became more a chronic disease. The second point, I think, is to be focused on quality of life of the patients, because sometimes we just get new treatment to extend maybe one month, two months, or three months the life of uh, patients, but with a very terrible quality of life. When my mother get ill, whatever months or weeks she will live, to, to do it as best as possible, without pain, uh, trying to have uh, good food, uh, waking up, uh, moving a little bit, makeup and looking nicer, because these are small things that throughout the journey of cancer is very important to live, if you, to live better and to live in good quality. Then if you succeed to be a survivor and it means that you fight the cancer and you get solution, that is the best things. But if you can't, uh, you have to remember always the quality of life or what you are doing. So I think the daily life is made by small things. And these are something that is very helpful through, through this journey. It's actually profound that daily life is made by small things. I'm going to remember that. It was a pleasure talking to you, Ricardo. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. Donors like Ricardo provide the foundation on which breakthroughs, both big and small, are built. You can learn more about the latest cancer research at conquer.org. Hearing the experiences of others can help people cope with the challenges cancer brings. Help others find these inspiring stories by leaving a review of the podcast and subscribe today on iTunes or Google Play to hear every new episode. Thanks for listening to Your Stories, Conquering Cancer.
The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.